So here we go. They expect a sellout crowd at the Noble Center. It's one of the big games on the calendar every year for Sooners basketball. And a real test for the Jayhawks as they get their Big 12 play started here tonight. The Sooners win the opening tip. Kansas primarily a man-to-man -man team. But this defense is going to be stretched because they have got to get out to shooters. That's going to open up a lot of drives. You know that? Kid Jordan Woodard, who missed the shot, has been very good as a young point guard. Nice move on the break. Wayne Selden with the first bucket of the game. And a very good start for Kansas to get out in transition. Early in the season, a really good transition team that has fallen off of late. Cameron Clark with the quick shot, and he hits it. Boy, that is really hard for Kansas to guard because Cameron Clark is playing essentially the four spot, and he comes down on the break as a trailer even after a made field goal. Clark, a guy who's really improved his game this year. Stepped up his scoring. He leads the Sooners. And a tough matchup, as you say. Well, he's really good in catching the ball and pulling up as a mid-range shooter and being guarded by a guy like Perry Ellis. He can take him away and really do some damage. He gets an early touch. The double team, he'll pass out of it. Selden for three. Whistle and a foul. And that's going the other way. Head coach of the Jayhawks, a native of this state of Oklahoma, grew up just really a few minutes from here in Norman, Bill Self, who has had such great success in Lawrence, looking for his 10th consecutive Big 12 championship. Really amazing what Bill Self has done, not just at Kansas, but throughout his coaching career. 17 years, he's won 13 conference championships in 17 years. Really amazing. Clark from that elbow area. It's another one. He's going to be really difficult to guard all game long in that area. So matchup problem early for the Jayhawks. With your Tharp, their point guard, who's played well in stretches this year. Kansas still looking for more consistency from that spot. He also has not been totally healthy of late. Andrew Wiggins looking to drive. He got fouled. The one thing Kansas needs to do a better job of is being ready on the catch. Both Wayne Selden, who took that shot on the last possession, that perimeter shot on the left side of the floor, and Andrew Wiggins weren't as prepared as they need to be. They weren't shot ready when the ball got to him. And Wiggins, who can be so effective in attack mode when he drives to the basket. That was a, a big part of their shoot-around today. Bill Self really got on both Selden and Wiggins about really being aggressive and looking to score and putting pressure on the defense. Pretty aggressive move from Tharp. Well, Zier Tharp is a really important part of this Kansas team, more so as a leader than anything else. But he healed. Challenged by Ellis. Missed the shot. Spangler with good position, and Kansas knocks it out of bounds. So Oklahoma will keep the ball with a new shot clock. Their head coach, Lon Kruger, another guy who's had so much success everywhere he's gone, his third year here with the Sooners. Well, Lon Kruger has coached everywhere in this game, taking five different teams to the NCAA tournament, coaching the NBA. Just an outstanding coach and a great guy. And he likes his team. They've changed the way they play this year. Playing more up-tempo with a smaller, quicker roster. Ryan Spangler, the transfer, has made an impact way off the mark with that jumper. But the loose ball tipped back to Spangler. Now, Spangler's a good pick-and-pop big guy. He can really run, and he can really rebound. Started his career at Gonzaga. Here's Ellis in transition. Nice spin move, and then was fouled. That'll be two free throws for the sophomore Perry Ellis. Ellis is such a big key to this Kansas basketball team. In wins, he's averaging about 16 points a game. In Kansas's losses, he's averaging only seven. And he really struggled against San Diego State. He was two of eight from the field. Just not aggressive inside, not getting low post position like he should. And he is a player who gets somewhat overlooked with the, the star freshman class with all the eye-opening athleticism the Jayhawks have. He's not that kind of athlete. Makes one of two free throws. But a very important piece for the Jayhawks. Well, he can score. But he's got to be aggressive in getting position and looking for the ball. And at times, he doesn't do that. You know, against Georgetown, he took a real shot in the head. And he didn't have a concussion so much. But, well, he got woozy at the free throw line. I mean, he missed the basket by five feet when he shot that. Here's Jordan Woodard, the freshman. Went to the same high school as Bill Self, the Kansas head coach. Shot clock starting to wind down. Clark and Bede switches out on Clark. There's Cousins for three. 
And the rebound, nice effort by Clark. A whistle, and Embiid and Clark still tangled up. Might get this game heated up a little bit in the first few minutes. Well, it really wasn't much. It was just everybody running in there that caused more of a problem than the two guys getting tangled up, both Embiid and Clark going after the ball. And, yeah, they just got their arms tangled up. And there was really nothing to that. It was a whole lot of bluster and not a lot of problems. David Hall, the lead referee, he took the worst of it all. He was sort of stuck in the middle. And he's had a rough week. <laughs> he has. He was in Ames last night for Iowa State Baylor. And Jerry Pollard, another official, pulled a hamstring, had to leave the game. The, the officials worked the two man crew for the second half. Well, it looks like we're going to go. We'll see how aggressive it is. Not very. The defensive end is where this Oklahoma team needs to take its next step. This team can really score. They've got to prove they can defend. We'll screen for the screener action. Selden for three. Good. That'd be so big for Kansas if he starts hitting those shots a little more consistently. Well, he's a good shooter. But even on that one, now, was he ready to shoot it when he caught it? Yeah, I guess. But. He can get into that a lot quicker, and as he does, he's going to be that much better of a shooter and that much better of a player, because he's going to be really good. He's good now. Ellis trailing, thought about the three, steps into it two, hits it, whistle, and a foul underneath the basket. I think the bucket's going to count. It looks like they got Spangler tied up with Joel Embiid underneath. Spangler underneath. Embiid fell down, then got back up. And uh, yeah, they just gave him a, a little shove there. So count the basket, plus Kansas gets to keep the ball. Nice start for the Jayhawks here. Wiggins had an opening, didn't look to shoot, now gets the ball back. And with the dribble, he was looking to pass, and B got the friendly carom and dunks it home. Now that was a pass, but since it went off the backboard, does he get credit for an assist there too? Or I would give him one. Because if it's not an assist, then Embiid gets the offensive rebound. It's totally Embiid's success there. From the corner, three is good. Buddy Heald. Buddy Heald is a talented scorer. And he can do much more than shoot it. Kid who was recruited by Bill Self in Kansas. Came to Oklahoma. Embiid, nice pass out of the double team. Selden pull up. Way off the mark, and the ball gets swatted out of bounds. It'll be Sooners basketball. When we come back to Norman, quick start for the Jayhawks. They a few moments ago, the two superstar freshmen, Wiggins to Embiid, whether Wiggins would get credit for an assist for what looked like it was a pass. Well, there's no question that was a lob pass, and he did get an assist, even though it hit the backboard. And Joel Embiid wearing those goggles, he got hit in the eye in practice on Monday, so as a precautionary measure, he's wearing those goggles. So no, no more Elijah Wan comparisons until he takes those off. It's got to be Kareem now. <laughs> two, two pretty good comparisons from his perspective. And it, Joel Embiid takes a seat on the bench. Both these teams use their benches fairly liberally. Actually, Kansas probably hasn't been able to use its bench as much as it is liked because of how difficult their schedule has yeah. been been remarkably difficult in the non-conference yeah you're right about that Bill Self has some young guys he likes he thinks are talented who haven't played big minutes yet long three and Clark was way off the mark with that one would have liked to have seen Bennett take that shot and work to get to the basket because he showed some poise and patience when he first got the ball but there was no double team coming he should have gone to work down low D.J. Bennett, number 31 for the Sooners. Big guy who can block some shots, has pretty good athleticism, has been banged up in the preseason, has not really gotten his year going. Jayhawks ball leading by five. That was a set play for Andrew Wiggins to get a lob look, then they hit Perry Ellis up top and then swing the ball to him. But Ellis is able to either take that shot or drive it. And they were able to get a switch where he had healed on him. And offense is very well designed. Yeah, one dribble and a nice looking shot from Wiggins. Now a foul against the Jayhawks on this end. Jordan Woodard is just relentless attacking the basket. You know, it's amazing. The one thing in the scouting report you can't do with Jordan Woodard is foul him. It's remarkable. He shot coming into this game 111 free throws on this young season. He's made 85. 
Now, of the top free throw shooters in the Big 12, he has made more free throws than any other of the top 15 free throw shooters have even attempted. That's incredible. It's remarkable. The guy's just a freshman. Looks like the point guard for now and for a long time to come here in Norman. He looks like he would play running back, too, if he felt like it for Bob Stoops. Yeah, physical abilities to come in and play right away. Woodard will take a quick rest. And today, Woodard was called the second best player in Edmond Memorial High School history. Yeah, who called him that? Bill Self, who considers himself the first and, and best player in Edmond Memorial High School. Well, Bill Self was a pretty good player. He was an outstanding player. He was player of the year in the state of Oklahoma in 1981 when Wayman Tisdale, Mark Price, Steve Hale were all juniors. So that's pretty good competition for that award for the Kansas head coach. Selden, another three. You think Wade Selden got the memo from Bill Self that he expected him to shoot when he's open? He looked pretty ready that time. He's got some confidence after taking those first couple shots. He made one out of two leading into that one. And now he's starting to shoot it with confidence. That's going to open up some drives for him. Seeing nobody even close to him. And that's the next step for, that's what I was talking about with Oklahoma. They've got to get better defensively because this team can really score. But unless they can get stops on top of their scores, it's going to be really difficult to win the highest level games that they play. Yeah, this Big 12 conference looks very tough. Ooh. The schedule for both these teams, especially early in conference play, is, it's just ridiculous. Uh, it, it really is. I mean, almost to the point where you have to question the scheduling. Good fake by Cameron Clark. The veteran move drew the foul against the freshman. We're talking about this Big 12 conference preseason poll and look at the overall records, which tell you something. A lot of those teams have also played difficult schedules, have quality wins. But especially up at the top, Kansas State has performed at a very high level. Oklahoma has played very well to start the season. I think the team that has impressed me most, maybe it's because I didn't expect quite as much from them, has been Iowa State. Iowa, and you saw them last night against Baylor. Iowa State has been phenomenal. So fun to watch. Up and down, everybody on the floor is skilled, can shoot, and the home court advantage they have in Ames, it is going to be so tough for these teams in the Big 12 to go there and get a win. Yeah, Hilton Coliseum, one of the great places in college basketball that probably doesn't get enough credit for it. But th that line that DeAndre Kane, the point guard for Iowa State, put up last night, the transfer from Marshall, he had 30 points, uh, eight rebounds, nine assists, five steals. It was phenomenal. Yeah, you don't see that was a regulation game, not overtime. You don't see those numbers in college hoops very often. Kansas will be there on Monday. Not an easy place to play, and it certainly won't be easy for Kansas. I, I would venture a guess that that's going to be one of the loudest games in college hoops all season long. It will be just totally rocking it. Hill. And I think if Kansas, and listen, Kansas has won this league nine years in a row, but if Kansas wins that game, I think it's a minor upset. You think the freshman's feeling confident here? Wayne Selden, three threes in the first six plus minutes. Well, you got to think that Oklahoma's going to make him put the ball on the floor at least once. That's an answer from Buddy Heald. Well, he's the guy that's got to get it going. Buddy Heald is really the first guy you've got to find in transition because he can get up a quick shot and he's got terrific range, but he can also drive it. Brandon Green, one of those guys we were talking about who hasn't had a chance to play a lot of minutes, even though I think Bill Self would like to play him a little more. He's in the game now for Kansas. That's a Jayhawks turnover, though. Yeah, I think that's a good point on Brandon Green, that if, if Kansas had played an easier schedule in the non-conference, he would have played a lot more minutes. And they could have gotten a different kind of rotation. Even the teams that on paper you say, well, those are big mismatches in Kansas' favor. Even those teams, the likes of Towson and Iona and... And New Mexico's a very good team. Th those are all quality opponents. Yeah, and, and it's not, there, there's no mop-up duty in those games. I mean, you know, Kansas blew out Towson. But Towson's a good team. They beat Temple earlier in the year. Jarrell Benneman, the transfer from Georgetown, is one of the best players in the country. Iona can really shoot it. They've got Sean Armand who can really shoot it. And the losses for Kansas, four losses, but at Florida, at Colorado, against a very good Villanova team, and then the San Diego State loss. Frank Booker with his first make of the game. Another young Sooner hitting a shot from the outside. The freshman. Starting to get a little louder. Selden attacks the basket. Might be the best stretch of play he's had in a Kansas uniform. Well, knocking those perimeter shots down opens up the drive. 
And if Kansas makes a mistake on their end, a quick shot or a turnover, Oklahoma can make them pay for it in a hurry. Kick ball to senior Tyler Neal coming off one of his best games ever. As soon as Oklahoma gets the ball out of bounds, they are getting it up the floor. And looking opposite, Frank Booker getting his feet set. Well, he is really an outstanding shooter. The vast majority of his field goals have been three, so you got to find him at that three-point line. That's pretty impressive ball movement in the open court. Here the Jayhawks in the open court. Frank Mason just threw it away. Very careless turnover from the Jayhawks freshman. Well, Frank Mason is an attack guard, but until he, in transition, uses that free throw line as a stop sign, those kind of turnovers are coming. Yeah, he just, at the last second, because he took it too deep for that kind of pass, he was basically throwing it to the end of the Oklahoma bench, and that's going to be a tough catch, even if it were on target. Jalon Hornbeek in for Oklahoma, brings the ball up, plays a lot of minutes at backup point. There's Spangler on the move, got fouled before the shot. Spangler grew up not far from here, wound up at Gonzaga. And didn't really play very much there, and transferred out, came back to Oklahoma. And he's really a good player. Play out on the perimeter, he can take a, a big guy away and knock down a three. Good screener, so he guy he can play pick and pop with. Spangler lost it going up there, it's out of bounds, and off of Kansas. So it'll stay Oklahoma ball. Well, Spangler was just a great high school athlete in this area, just a few miles really from Norman. And Oklahoma did not offer him a scholarship out of high school, but I think he always had that idea. He wanted to play a little closer to home. It's a heck of a quarterback in high school, too. Big time. Oh, Oklahoma needs a timeout, so that'll send us to a break. Made the tournament last year, had a lot of experience. They lost so much of what they had last season. The expectations were down a little bit. And yet the Sooners are 12 and 2. Yeah, they played very well. And we've talked about their improvement on the offensive end. I mean, they lost Romero Osby, which was a big guy to lose. Boy, what a block. And Selden, the block almost was the outlet pass with the left hand. Selden finishes. And Ryan Spangler has driven the ball three times now. And he has gotten resistance on each one, the most on that last play. Two guys could have blocked that shot. And Cousins kind of got bailed out there, the foul called. Wayne Selden just off to a tremendous start for Kansas. He and the Jayhawks, 24-17 lead in the first half. Kansas with the lead, 15 of those 24 points from their freshman Wayne Selden. Well, Wayne Selden's career high is 15. He got to get against Duke in the Champions Classic. He's got 15 points already in this one. He's been knocking down perimeter shots. You get up and try to get into him to take away that shot. He gets out in transition. He can drive it. This is a guy who is big, strong, physical. And he came into Kansas with a, a very good mid-range game, but he has backed that up, and he's able to knock down open perimeter shots now, and I think he's only going to get better and better. A guy who, with almost any other program in the country, would have come in as the top recruit, the top freshman, the heralded kid, but with Embiid, with Wiggins at Kansas, sometimes gets lost in the shuffle a little bit, but looks like a very confident player here tonight. Well, and that's the kind of thing that Kansas needs is for all all these players, no matter what year they are, whether it's Perry Ellis or Andrew Wiggins or Wayne Selden, if all of these players are really aggressive and looking to score, there's nothing selfish about looking to score. Now, it's selfish to take bad shots, but if you're a threat out there, you're really opening up things for your teammates. And I think that was a lot of the emphasis for Bill Self today. No question. When he got on Selden for essentially passing up an open shot while they were running dummy offense today, he got all over him and just said, you know, it's not selfish for you to take that shot. You're hurting the team when you don't. Oklahoma already in the bonus. Cousins hit two free throws. Five-point game here in Norman. There's that ball screen continuity that Kansas runs. Tharp, a little shot fake, and then found his teammate down low, and Black just missed the layup. Now a whistle, and a foul against the Sooners, against Clark. That was a really good pass by Nadir Tharp inside. It kind of surprised Tarek Black a little bit. He was looking for him to shoot it, and that's something that Black's got to finish. He played a terrific game against Georgetown right before the holiday break. A guy who's physically imposing, played at Memphis, graduated, has come here to Kansas. A guy who had some real productive games for Memphis. I think I asked at the beginning of the year, asked Nadir Tharp, 
like who sets the, the best screens on your team? And he goes, you kidding? It was Tarek Black, mostly even by accident. Selden again, not this time, in and out. Offensive rebound, and Wiggins puts it back in. Sometimes the switching defense that Oklahoma plays can put them in a bad spot for, off uh, for taking away offensive rebounds. And there's Woodard again on the attack. He'll go back to the free throw line. There's really nobody, nobody was able to block out Jamari Trailer. You've got... Jordan Woodard's got to put a body on him. And that's just not going to happen. You're not going to be able to keep him from getting to the bucket. And that opened it up for Andrew Wiggins. Yeah, that's a good point. Trailer did a lot of work there. And Wiggins was the beneficiary. Got the layup. Well, here's Woodard. The numbers have gone way up. The shooting's been better. This has been consistent the whole way through. The guy who's going to the line more than anybody else in this league. He attacks off the dribble. He's really quick. And he uses his body really well. You know, he body seeks for the defender and creates the contact and draws the foul. Now, you can sit and complain and say, well, the referee shouldn't call that and all that stuff, but he's putting the referee in a position to have to make the call, and he's getting the benefit of it and doing a really good job with it. Not often you see Kansas with that big of a differential in a negative way from the free throw line. Still early in this game, but the Sooners doing a lot of work at the line. Tharp, the runner, is good off the glass. Kansas really able to drive it after if they move the ball from side to side and it doesn't stay on one side you know, they're getting almost anything they want Neil hits the three and Tyler Neal is an active cutter he can step away and knock down a shot and I saw him play in Maui several years ago when he was a freshman he put up 16 against Virginia he's a capable player was huge for Oklahoma in their win on the road in Austin just a few days ago. Well, threes and free throws keeping the Sooners close in this first half. Still a long way to go. A lot of offense so far. Selden dumped it down to Embiid, who kind of got knocked off balance and then lost it out of bounds. Well, Oklahoma got the turnover there, but I don't think the Sooners can afford to let Kansas get a full head of steam, driving essentially from the deep wing and getting all the way to the rim. That's not going to work. Got away with it that time. Woodard now. Ellis switched off on him, but Woodard gives it up. The Cousins needs to take Perry Ellis off the dribble. Uh, and steps back into a jumper and came up short. Nice rebound, Wiggins, who then almost lost it out of bounds. In fact, he did turn it over. It's a travel. Well, I'd take that turnover if I could get my head that close to the rim on a rebound. Man, holy cow, that's an extra step on the ladder there. Just a tiny little play, but part of why so many are so excited about Andrew Wiggins. The guy who's had literally had his head on the rim this year is, the, is Sam Thompson of Ohio State. I mean, he needs to wear a helmet when he goes up and dunks. The other night in East Lansing, I, I did. I thought he was going to knock himself out there late in the game. When, you, when he goes up to dunk and he has to duck his head, you know he's up there. It was phenomenal. Hawks ball. Tharp has played well in this first half. Got to keep his dribble yeah. there. Picked up his dribble early. Tough entry pass. Good catch by Embiid. Tharp open. Rebound Spangler. And a quick outlet to Cousins. Nice pass. Neal. A lot of contact. It's a blocking foul. And Bill Self is living. He came several steps out onto the court. Awfully close, but Joel Embiid was stepping forward into the contact. And with the new interpretation of the charge block as a secondary defender, if you are not set and in position by the time that the offensive player gets into his shooting motion, raises his hands and arms for shooting motion, it's going to be deemed a, a, a block. Close, but... You know, I think the referee probably made the right call there, but that's very uh, that's a difficult difficult position for the official to be in from behind there. Yep. Second foul against MB foul trouble has been a problem for him. It's limited his minutes in some games. Well, the thing you'd rather see, at least I would, is a guy seven feet tall getting his fouls, blocking shots, not taking charge. Yeah, just go challenge. Wiggins draws a foul on this end. 
think this is the next step for Andrew Wiggins as a player, is attacking off the dribble more. And he's a good perimeter shooter. He's got a good stroke, but another guy who probably has to be more down and ready when he gets the ball. But he's such a great athlete that I think if he attacks the rim, he's going to spend more time at the free throw line and put his opponents in more foul trouble. Yeah, and you see those free throw numbers, they've gone way up, so it's a good thing for Kansas if he gets to the line. Just right there, a refusal of the ball screen. Took it deep and then went right into the defender to draw the foul. Wiggins made one of two. This game has been played with both teams. They look comfortable. And I don't think, as a defensive team, you don't want the offense to look or feel comfortable, and everybody looks comfortable out there. And we don't say that often with Kansas and Bill Self. Spangler to Neal in the corner. Another three. Well, that's just too easy. Wiggins left his feet, but found Tharp. Wiggins split right through the potential double team and then was fouled. Almost a spectacular finish, but he'll go back to the free throw line. You know, when Wiggins makes this drive, you know, it's easy It's easy to say he should go up and take it to dunk. But I think if he tries to get that ball to the rim, even if he falls short, he's going to have more of an opportunity to complete the play and draw the foul. I do think part of what you were just talking about a moment ago, that's the second foul against Ryan Spangler, right. who's a critical player for Oklahoma, so that aggressiveness gets Spangler to the bench. Now you want to get to the free throw line, one, because it's the most efficient place to score on a basketball floor. You're going to score more points, even as an average free throw shooter, than you are taking a perimeter shot or any other shot on the floor. But it also puts the other team in foul trouble, and it changes the way they defend the closer they get to the one and one both teams will be in the bonus from here on out. The final nearly eight minutes of this half. Cameron Clark, the crossover move. But Clark, when he's got a big guy on him on the perimeter, and he gets isolated, I mean, he can dominate the game. Almost looks like Wiggins away elevates for those jumpers, Wiggins. Rebound, Cousins. Sooners want to run. Cousins, nobody stops him until the very end. And I think Trailer got a piece of it. Well, you take a quick shot against Oklahoma, and they're going to be able to take it the other way. Now, that's a shot that Wiggins can make. And not, not a bad shot most of the time, but off of one pass. I'm not sure it's the best shot that they can get. Here's Trailer, the double team. Selden went right past the defense, the follow by Ellis. See, Dave, that's what we've been talking about. You get the ball to the other side of the floor, and Kansas get anything they want. So you're making a huge mistake if you keep it on one side and don't reverse it. Well, Perry Ellis has been so important for this Kansas Jayhawks team. The hustle plays, and this time with the follow bucket, the Jayhawks on the road opening Big 12 play, and they lead by three. Then Fran has a rooting interest in that Harvard game. He's got perhaps a rooting interest in this Oklahoma Kansas game his son James is a walk on with the Sooners there's James not just a player a famed trick shot artist famed look him up on YouTube thankfully his mother was a great athlete <laughs> the athletic genes did trickle down <laughs> well, he's a great kid and he is a big part of this Oklahoma program even though he does not play many minutes for the Sooners a couple of free throws it's a one point game well, one, two, two, three quarter court pressure. Not necessarily trying to force turnovers, but slow the advance. Frank Mason off the bench. Wiggins has been playing huge minutes lately, just not coming out of games. Mason again with the attack drive right down the lane. And Kansas is just waltzing to the rim without anybody really able to stay in front or help side coming over. Basically every possession, but shooting like that is keeping the Sooners close. It's a one-point game. Yeah, both these teams are good offensively. I think that Oklahoma probably the better offensive team. And Kansas has not, this has not been Bill Self's best defensive team yet. But 
I think Kansas probably of the two is a better, better defensive team, but both teams are getting basically whatever they want. Connor Frankamp, freshman from Wichita, getting some minutes here. Ellis underneath. Really nice pass by Jamari Trailer. I think Perry Ellis has really got to be aggressive and look for the ball because he can score. And in some of these games, I and mean, he really struggled against a very good defense San that San Diego State has, but I don't think any defense good enough to totally shut you out. That was good defense there by Mason to cut off Clark, who wants the ball back from Cousins, and now a foul against Mason. And Frank Mason's going to learn that. I mean, Cameron Clark was calling for the ball because he knew he had the mismatch. But Mason had him two steps off the lane. You know, you're not going to let him catch it, but there's no reason to foul him there. If he catches it, get low and make him shoot over you. Instead, the foul double bonus for the Sooners. Clark at the line to shoot two. Just a, an amazing difference between Cameron Clark last year and Cameron Clark this year. You know, he averaged about six and a half, seven points a game last year. He came off the bench for the majority of the year. But as a starter this year, he's been one of, uh, of a handful of the, the best and most efficient players in the league. Yeah, I mean, there were times last season where Cam Clark, he almost would not shoot, whether it was a confidence issue or whatever. 1-3-1 well, now, half court. And Kansas going to try to look to get the ball along the baseline. Perhaps Oklahoma trying to cut off some of those drives. Wiggins along the baseline, another whistle. Foul against the Sooners. Kansas runs a few things against this 1-3-1 one, one, where they'll send a, a baseline runner and try to force the low man of that 1-3-1 one, one to change sides, then they can attack, attack inside. Now, not double bonus, so these are one and one free throws. Wiggins misses the front end. Woodard back in the game. Kansas so, has been switching, excuse me, Dave, Kansas has been switching a lot of exchanges in this thing, too. Perry Ellis has been forced to guard some of those perimeter players away from the basket. Alon Kruger is so good at exploiting matchup advantages. Woodard went by Wiggins, but then a reach in as Wiggins tried to st strip the ball away. Yeah, it couldn't have been Wiggins. He got a clean strip. It must have been somebody else. That was not against Wiggins. It was against Connor Frankamp. But no shock that Jordan Woodard, the freshman from Arcadia, Oklahoma, is back at the line. Makes the first up two. If this court were like a Monopoly board, buy that free throw line because Jordan Woodard is going to owe you a lot of rent. Yeah. That but dude is there all the time. Build some hotels. I haven't played Monopoly in a long time, but. Well, remember that you built yeah, houses. You play, yeah, you put, oh, that's right. Put a hotel on there. The rent that's goes where up. the big money came from. That's it. Well, the crowd trying to get into it a little bit here. Tie game, 37-37. Lots of offense in this one. Mason almost lost the handle. There's Ellis with a touchdown low. The Sooners defense just swarmed him. Selden, Ellis right there to pick up the loose ball. Then the shot somehow didn't go. Just not strong moves there by Kansas. Woodard to the cheerleaders. Neal saying it got tipped, and so is Woodard. But the signal emphatically that it's Kansas basketball. Can we tell? Maybe it was trailer just a little bit. It was tough, certainly it's tough to see in that slow motion. Yeah, Wiggins now on this end draws another foul. So that sends us to a timeout tie game in Norman. The Sooners challenging the Jayhawks. It's because of the three point shooting of Oklahoma and the fact that Oklahoma has been living at the free throw line. Kansas has got to find a way to play good defense without fouling. Andrew Wiggins has gotten a bulk of his points at the line. Standout freshman with the huge expectations, perhaps unfair expectations on Andrew Wiggins. He makes them both. Well, Wiggins is a really good player. Uh, the LeBron comparisons were unfair yeah. because there isn't another LeBron. But as he matures, I mean, he's going to be a great defender. He's 
tremendous in transition. I think his defense is underrated. He, he made a pretty nice defensive play there to cut off Clark. Well, that's where his real value is, is transition and defense. Neal, a little shot fake to create the opening. Oklahoma has been successful using ball fakes and shot fakes because Kansas, Wiggins is one. They've been going for a lot of those fakes. Yeah, and you don't have Embiid out there on the floor, the shot blocker. Trailer just throws the ball away. Turnover number five for the Jayhawks. Buddy Heald was out there switching everything and getting into passing lanes. And when you're getting a switch, you either have to screen, essentially screen your own man to take him out of the play, or you've got to slip and get to the basket. There are things that you can do to combat a switching team, and Kansas has not been doing those things. Heald through the lob, and Wiggins got called for a hold as Clark started to elevate, and now a technical foul against Bill Self. Bill wanted that. He was asking for that one. He wanted it. Andrew Wiggins got in the way and bumped the cutter. Cameron Clark on that play, and Bill Self had gotten warned before by Dave Hall, and he, he wanted that. There's no question in my mind that was planned. And the idea behind a coach, perhaps in the back of his mind, saying maybe I need to fire, you know, it, part of it's fire up your team, part of it is, you know, send a message to the officials that you're upset. <laughs> and he, I think he got that message yep. across. Message received. It's healed at the line for the technical free throws. So he gets two of those, and then it'll be Clark at the line in the double bonus. Bill Self uses it almost like an extra timeout. He'll make them both. We'll see if we can see that foul against Andrew Wiggins again. Yeah, that was a lob play, and just that little bump threw the timing of the play off. And that, that was one where you, know, you can say, okay, that's a foul. But at the same time, it wasn't called. I don't think anybody would have complained either. Yeah. It's, it's, it's one of those difficult things where if it's called, you can justify it. If it's not called, you're not going to not gonna really, some people aren't going to notice it. Does that sort of fall under the umbrella of freedom of movement? Yes. Yes. And that's one thing that I think is fine if the officials call it all the time. Well, the free throw line obviously has been very good to Oklahoma. It's really incredible how much offense they're getting there. 17 of 19 at the line. This is their biggest lead. Wiggins now on the bench with his two fouls. Little 9 2 Sooners run. Final three minutes of the half. Ellis got free down low. That's another foul. This time against Heald as Ellis was going up. Brandon Green a little late getting that ball inside to Jamari Trailer. It's got to go inside right away. And if a, a double team is drawn, dribble out of it, look opposite. But once the ball goes inside and it goes side to side, Kansas has gotten some really good things. Ellis spins that one. I think that's another thing that Coach Self was emphasizing this afternoon with his team. When that when that player down low has a position, when the opening is there, you got to get the ball to him. I think Bill Self is, and his staff are going to be emphasizing with with their team at halftime. You know, they've got with just under three minutes to go in the first half. They got 41 points. Now you don't expect to be trailing. Good defensive teams don't expect to be trailing when they put up 41 in the first half. No kidding. And Oklahoma, they are top five in the country in points, but these are the Jayhawks pride themselves on defense. There's a turnover for Oklahoma, their fifth of the first half. Yeah, Buddy Heald with the shot fake and then shuffled his feet before he put it on the deck. Good player, Buddy Heald. Sophomore grew up in the Bahamas. Came to the United States for his fat last few years of high school. Plays with a lot of energy. Actually played his high school ball in the state of Kansas. And Buddy Heald is way more than just a shooter. He's just getting better and better. I think he's got a, a really bright future ahead of him. There's a foul with DJ Bennett defending Ellis in the post. Wayne Selden got off to the tremendous start for Kansas. Had 15 points, it seemed like, in the blink of an eye. We haven't heard from him much in the, the latter part of this first half. Ellis doing some nice things down low for the Jayhawks. Makes the first of two. 
Saturday showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. Doubleheader on Saturday, first at noon. It's Carolina and Syracuse, second ranked team in the country at noon. And then these Jayhawks at home against Kansas State at two both games on Watch ESPN. It's just the, the next step in this brutal start that Kansas has. You know, obviously here at Oklahoma, when they play K State, then they're on the road at Iowa State, then they play Oklahoma State and Baylor and Allen Fieldhouse. I don't think there's a more difficult start to Big 12 play than that. Yeah, I don't think so. Unless That's somebody right. scheduled the, the Oklahoma City Thunder. Well, Kevin Durant, he may have some days off. He might <laughs> want to come down here and take a shot at the Jayhawks. Yeah, maybe Bill Self will have them in to play. <laughs> That's it. Now, this time it'll be Frank Booker, the freshman at the line. That was Tharp with the foul. That's his third personal, by the way. The Jayhawks have a good bit of foul trouble. This is what Jay was talking about. Kansas State on Saturday in Ames, Oklahoma State, Baylor. What a start to conference play. And that, that first five games, two games on the road, and then the quality of opponent you got coming into your place, that is really brutal. And you know, Oklahoma doesn't have an easy start to their schedule either. But there's going to be a lot decided in the conference race just in the first five games. What promises to be a very tight Big 12 race this year. Selden, the catch and shoot three. A little too strong. Nice tip rebound back to Ellis. Well, Jamari Trailer did not give up on that. Look at Trailer work down low. Had it stripped away as he tried to go up. Now whistle and a jump ball. So the Sooners will have it. Kansas didn't finish that play, but Jamari Trailer put the Jayhawks in position to get an easy bucket. They just didn't complete it. And they're, they're looking, I think, for that from him. Remember Kevin Young last year was kind of their energy hustle guy. He's moved on. I think Trailer has that kind of skill set. I think that's exactly right. He can block shots. He can rebound. He can really run the floor. He's going to score primarily off of drop-offs, offensive rebounds, getting an angle. He's not the type of guy you're going to throw it down in the low post and He's going to put the dream shake on you, but he's really capable. Yeah, Young ended up being an important part of that Kansas team last year. And a team that, you know, in the middle of the year last year, remember that loss they took to TCU? They lost three in a row, and you're thinking, geez, can they beat anybody? And that was a team that should have beaten Michigan. Yep, great game. Classic game. Frank Camp wide open. He can shoot, and he hits a three. I'm not sure you can get that that wide open in a real game that was amazing you don't get that much time to shoot in a horse game he wasn't that open in walkthrough I know that Clark followed his own miss but lost it out of bounds let's see how open he was Hunter Frankamp just coming down the court you don't get more open than that he was not that open in warm-ups yeah, that's pretty amazing and he's a good shooter. He, kid who has, he has not played very many minutes for Bill Self. Yeah, he's an outstanding shooter. And that's the thing, Dave, we talked about before that with a, and that's the art of scheduling that, you know, when you play some of these guarantee games, people complain that, oh, you're playing cupcake teams. But it gives your, uh, your team an opportunity to get competent while they're winning. And it gives your bench a chance to get in and play. And, you know, you can't play all cupcakes. That, that wouldn't be right. But. Kansas probably overdid it with their schedule. That, that was a, a really difficult non-conference slate. Yeah, and it wasn't just the difficulty of the teams. They they were almost a full month between home games. That's right. I, I forgot about that. That's right. They're gone. I think it was 29 days from Allen Fieldhouse. So yeah, I think a lot of coaches figure they use those home games to build up some confidence with the young kids, a little more comfortable in the home environment. And and when I talked to Bill a few weeks ago. He said, well, that's on me. I just that I just overdid it with this group. I needed to have a few games mixed in there where we could build up the confidence of some of our players. But the good news is, is for Kansas is they are firmly entrenched in reality. They know exactly who they are. No kidding. And Perry Ellis is a big part of that. That was a beautiful runner from Ellis. He's got 13. He is a good player. I'll tell you, you know, right now, Kansas has no pressure on him at all. He got all the time in the world to decide, well, I'm going to shoot this or drive it. Well, I wonder what I should. It's almost like you're paralyzed by having too many options. He's not George Niang in that he doesn't have maybe the versatile offensive game, but he's not an above-the-rim player. He just finds ways to score. Lon Kruger wants a timeout. There is that five-second difference between game clock and shot clock.
Picks up a play. Kevin Durant's old team, the Texas Longhorns, they're up in Stillwater tonight playing Cowboys. And right now, Oklahoma. Oh, so out of a timeout. Yeah, Oklahoma just threw it away. Woodard tripped and fell. If I were Selden, I would have taken the you Go get that ball and take it to the rim. Take the basket. Yeah, you got an opportunity to get a basket there and perhaps get fouled. Yeah, just get the layup. I think he had plenty of room to grab that ball. Well, Oklahoma could have done this if they got the ball inbounds, but right now, Kansas, you can basically, now Kansas can take it all the way down and, and with four seconds shoot it and have a chance for an offensive rebound, but Oklahoma, if they get the ball in, they could have taken it down to the end of that shot clock and basically had a chance for an offensive rebound and the half would have been over. Yeah, so that feels like a big mistake in the final seconds. It's Connor Frankamp who's handling the ball right now. Ellis tries to set a screen. No real point guard on the floor, so Frank Camp pulls up and hits the two. And the final seconds are ticking off the clock. That's how the first half ends. Well, what a big mistake for Oklahoma. That was a five, six point swing on that last play. Yeah. The first half in a real positive way. Wayne Selden got off to the very quick start. And you see some of the shooting numbers of the individuals, Clark and Neal, but that free throw number is what really stands out. And Kansas has gotten basically whatever they have wanted in the paint. They're getting the ball to the rim. Uh, they're shooting 64% from the field. They, they, they've gotten actually to the free throw line at a fair clip. It just pales in comparison to what Oklahoma has shot. But only two guys have gotten to the line for Kansas, Andrew Wiggins and Perry Ellis. And a huge positive for that guy, number one, Wayne Selden, who has struggled at times. A very heralded freshman in his first year in Lawrence. Had a heck of a half for the Jayhawks. And Connor Frankamp, he earns the start at the second half. Well, Nadir Tharp with those three fouls. Bill Self can't afford to have him pick up another one. Now, how about Joel Embiid? He's wearing the goggles for the first time, except for he's not wearing them. He's got them up over his eyes. Yeah, I, I don't think he's used to wearing them. He just figured oh, it out. Okay. Somebody told him to put him down, and Bill Self's <laughs> over there laughing at him. Yeah, that's sort of big part of wearing them. <laughs> you got to actually put them on. Well, he, he had a chuckle himself. He's had a little scratch on Monday, so protective goggles. Selden gets the friendly roll. And he is enjoying this game. Got a big smile on his face as he runs down on defense. I, I, I like to see that. It's supposed to be fun. I think at times you watch the Jayhawks, it hasn't been that fun in the first couple months of the year. Well, it is fun when the shots are going in. When yeah. you've got 18 at the start of the second half, it is really fun. The problem is when you're playing in the last game against San Diego State and shoot 20% in the first half. That's not quite as fun. Blocking foul against Oklahoma. Well, the last, what, minute of clock time has not been good for the Sooners. No. O Oklahoma has got to make a commitment to play better defense. I, I, this, is a, this is a good team, and I think they've got a chance to get a lot better. But uh, the next step on the ladder of improvement for Oklahoma is to become a, a stingier defensive team. And I think Lon Kruger, more than anyone, knows that and is preaching it to his team. Not much gets by that guy, one, no. of, one of the great coaches in the game. And always been a good defensive coach. Heck of a baseball player, too. Great baseball player, Kansas State. Always thought that baseball would be his uh, his sport. We were talking with some of the Jayhawks. That's a whistle and count the basket with the foul. So Kansas wondering what happened there. Cameron Clark with the first Oklahoma bucket of the second half. It looked like that there were two hands on Cam Clark when just a little pick and pop, and he got the matchup he wanted with Connor Frankamp, and it looked like he just had that kept that hand on him. And I think, again, an example, sort of to your point, just make him make the shot. Don't even give the officials a chance to blow the whistle there. Clark completes the three-point play. Now Kansas had its biggest lead. It's down to eight now. Ellis against Ryan Spangler. Selden open again. Three! Good pass out by Perry Ellis. That ball stayed on one side of the floor too long, but when Ellis drew the double team, he was savvy enough to get it back out. Cousins way short, but good hustle play by Buddy Heal. Now those are the kind of plays. Lon Kruger loved it, and Bill Self was incensed. 
And I think the, the coach of the defensive team that gives one of those up is oftentimes really upset by that kind of play. Zeldin used the shot fake and this time attacked and used the glass. What a night for Wayne Selden 23 he has blown away his career high and he's got a long way to go man is he playing well but he healed for three well, that's where Andrew Wiggins was playing with with some nonchalance as athletic and as gifted as he is as a defender there's got to be a sense of urgency where he's going to get out there and make buddy heel put that on the deck and, and that's his, all you can really ask. Yeah, his coach was making that point to him just a moment ago in a little more emphatic <laughs> way. <laughs> Less verbose and more, more on point. I, I think so. Very on point. <laughs> Selden pulls up. Embiid with the tap back to Frankham. Frankham. Off the mark. Embiid had it knocked away. Here comes Woodard for the Sooners. Nice lead for Spangler. Really nice play by Jordan Woodard, an outstanding passer. Now, Embiid got that ball knocked away on the other end. Phil Self was saying this morning that that's the, one of the next steps for him is getting his hands stronger. He's got to be able to hang on to that ball because it's going to get slapped at. Ellis attacked along the baseline. He'll be back at the free throw line. Really nice performance from Perry Ellis. And we pointed out early, when he plays well, Kansas wins. When he's aggressive. And he certainly wasn't very aggressive against San Diego State. Part of that was how good of a defensive team the Aztecs are. And they can really guard. They're long-armed. They're athletic. They doubled in the post. And their doubles were really aggressive. They kept the ball from coming out on the same side. It kind of reminded you a little bit of the, the double-team ability of UCLA when Ben Hallen was there yeah. uh, that they could really double the post and they never let it come out on the same side It's really difficult to, uh, to deal with Steve Fisher's got a very good team particularly on the defensive end Ellis makes the free throws back to an eight-point lead for the Jayhawks Ryan Spangler right back to the bench it's been a quiet game for him he's got three fouls and B goes to the bench himself and it could be that he's struggling with whatever's going on that left eye does not look right Clark swarmed by the defense. That'll be a block shot for the Jayhawks. And a good challenge without fouling on that play. Wiggins a little shot fake, and then the athletic move missed the shot. Trailer sticks it in with the foul. Now, Jamari Trailer is just around the ball when it's up on the glass. He doesn't surrender to blockouts, and when that ball went up, Wiggins got knocked away to try to get that second effort and I'm not sure that any I haven't seen anybody in college basketball that has a better second jump than Andrew Wiggins phenomenal how quick he can get off the floor a second time Wiggins will watch his teammate trailer try to finish off the three-point play and he does he's given Kansas a nice lift if he can give Bill Self these kind of productive minutes and all of a sudden, that front court rotation becomes even better for Kansas. Yeah, really important, especially on a night where Embiid is struggling and he's got whatever's going on with his eye. And that's going to happen. I mean, th these are difficult road games, and for any freshman, going on the road is just something they don't have a ton of experience in. It's different, and it's something you have to get used to. Selden playing with so much confidence. Gets it back from Fran Camp. Maybe he had a fleeting thought of shooting it from a long way out. Not sure how fleeting it was. He just thought better of it. Yeah. I think Connor Frankamp is thinking shot all the time, and he should, because he can really fire it. That's an offensive foul. I think that's an illegal screen against Jamari Trailer. Sends us to a timeout. So Kansas playing well. Oh, that that should be his avatar for his Twitter account. Right there. Look at that. Could have started Top Gun. A little flashback for coach self who was a tremendous all-around athlete and clearly he wouldn't pay the blackmail we asked for to not show those pictures I know we tried bank shot for Cam Clark that's excellent use use of a shot fake get the, the defense to commit and get your shoulders passed that's why you got to stay on the ground and make them shoot over that's just too easy 
Wiggins gets the touch and hands off to the guy who's been the offensive star for the Jayhawks, Selden. Now a whistle and a foul. Sooners really struggling to play post defense against Perry Ellis. And Bill Self and all the ties he has to this area. He always has friends and family, high school buddies born in Oklahoma, Edmund Memorial High, went to Oklahoma State, of course, part of the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame, and as Jay said earlier, player of the year in high school hoops in his senior year. You know how I knew that. Bill Self tells me every time you see him. <laughs> Did you know I was player of the year in Oklahoma in high school? Very modest guy. <laughs> you know who's also in the Oklahoma Basketball Hall of Fame? Ooh. Bob Knight's wife, Karen, who was a, a truly outstanding high school basketball coach in the, the state of Oklahoma. Now, I did not know that. And, and Bob Knight will tell you he is the second best coach in his family. Well, sometimes you think Oklahoma and it's all about football. They have a great basketball history at this school in this program, but the high school programs around the state. Absolutely. John McLeod coached here years ago, coached Alvin Adams and went to the Final Four in 2002 under Kelvin Sampson. Billy Tufts had some amazing basketball teams, went to the championship game in 88, lost to Danny and the Miracles. Yeah, a loss that still in some ways hovers over this matchup whenever Oklahoma and Kansas meet. Woodard made the free throws. Sooners at the line, 21 of 24 in this game. Spreading the floor. Double team trailer tries to fight right through it. The ball was knocked to Buddy Heel. That double team came from a long distance, and Trailer's got to do something with it quicker than that. Yeah, he had enough time to react. Trailer on this end. Maybe Wiggins got a piece of it as well. Clark after the hesitation. The three will clang out of bounds. When Wayne Selden, as that ball was headed out of bounds, similar to the last play of the first half where Jordan Woodard fell down on that inbounds play, I think you, when you can get a ball to keep it from going out of bounds, you get it. I agree. And you don't leave it up to the official. Now, in the first half, I thought Selden should have gotten it because he could take it to the basket and score. But on that one, I don't let the official decide that. Get the ball. Yeah. You can get it, get it. I mean, maybe you, you missed something out there. You weren't paying close enough attention. Who knows? Just grab the ball. Deer Tharp, who's had foul trouble for much of this game back in. Selden, not that time. Yeah, that's where Selden could have driven the ball. That, that play was designed for a lob, then an isolation. Clark, the two, no good. Both these teams showing some signs of cooling off a little bit from the field. Long way to go. Jayhawks ball leading by nine. Tharp, nobody really stopped him. He had a pretty good look and just missed the shot. Back and forth action. Woodard, that crossover. Layup, no good. Tip by Heel. What a play. A great drive by Jordan Woodard and then a fabulous tip in by Heel. This came flying in from nowhere and enough to upset Bill Self. He calls it. Now Perry Ellis has got to get over there and slow that down. Nobody blocked out Buddy Heal. He got an easy run up to the basket. You saw Heal pop up from the bench. He had some blood on his jersey, so they were trying to clean that up. Wiggins might have rushed that shot. Kansas sticking with it, but none of the tip attempts went down. Yeah, Oklahoma would be able to put quite a bit of game pressure on Kansas if they get a score here, whether it's a two or a three to make it a two possession game yeah, a few minutes ago it felt like Jayhawks had some nice separation Wiggins with the arm bar foul and that contact a lot of people say well it's incidental well so is two hands on a ball him but they've always called that as a foul and you know the arm bar is called as a foul now you put your arm out that's going to get called and we've played enough games now in this season for everybody to know that there's no question well, that's not a problem. You can go back and get that ball. Yeah. And they got plenty of time. The shot clock resets after the foul call. Woodard creates for his teammate. The three. 
no good from Ormby. Heck of a rebound by Trailer. He's done a really nice job on the glass. Yeah, I've been impressed. Energy guy for Kansas off the bench. And Bede with that double team. Barb three. Got it. It was comfortably done by Joel Embiid. I thought he could have gotten that ball out a little bit quicker once he saw that double team take one dribble out of the double team and look opposite. But he did a good job of handling that. Not a very good job by Kansas handling the double teams against San Diego State, but much better in this ball game. Cousins, beautiful little step back shot. Cousins is so quick and a very good pull up shooter. He can go right or he can go left. And with Hornbeak being injured, Cousins is playing some backup point. He's done a nice job. Yeah, the, the Sooners people were saying to us and beat from the outside. He does have some range outside. Missed that one. The carom. There's trailer again to Embiid with the left hand finish. Yeah, give Jamari Trailer all the credit for that. Got an extra possession and got it to his teammate Joel Embiid to finish with the left hand. Embiid with the block. So the big man starting to come to life. Embiid kept that in play. That's just as impressive as the block itself. Yeah, that's how really how it's supposed to be done. He didn't travel, did not pick up that pivot foot. foot. That quick spin move along the baseline. He was fouled. The crowd doesn't like it. They didn't see that foot down, but Joel Embiid just oozes potential. last sequence shows off a lot of the natural talents for the seven footer well Joel Embiid has got it all and he is just getting better and better passing out of the double team when he catches he's got a really good pair of hands he needs to get his hands stronger as Bill Self said earlier today but he can score with either hand and this is just a tremendous block shot one because he blocked it out of the air but the second he left it in play and here yeah that was a travel yeah. both his feet came up didn't look like it looked like that Left foot stayed down, but it didn't. Stayed with the play, ultimately drew a foul, so he's at the line. At the free throw line, he puts those goggles up on his forehead. The numbers have been huge lately. Yeah, well, last four games, he's averaged 15 points, nine rebounds, three blocks, and has gone 17 of 24 from the field. That's pretty good. And still not playing big time minutes. Yeah. Like 20, 21 minutes a game, give or take. He looks very smooth, I think, from the free throw line. Does not look awkward like some young big men. He's got a nice touch. Oh, he's, the, he's the real thing, and, and he's been compared favorably to Hakeem Olajuwon in his first year at Houston. And Reed Geddes, who played on that Houston team with Olajuwon, mentioned to us that in an email that he thinks the comparison is fair, but... Elijah like Embiid is ahead of Elijah Juan offensively, but he's nowhere near as as physically dominant as Elijah Juan was as a shot blocker rebounder and how physically tough he was as a person. Yeah, and it's going to be a few years probably until we can really make the comparison because likely Embiid will be coming out to the NBA if it's this year or next and Elijah Juan played four years at Houston. Neal with the move for the bucket. Uh, now Embiid. I think would be really well served to come back for at least one more year. I think the longer he stays, the better he's going to get. And I happen to believe he's the real thing. And when you're the real thing, it doesn't hurt you to stay. You know, now if you're not and you need to go before you get found out, I understand that. But he doesn't need to do that. Tharp committed to travel. All the NBA GMs and executives who are listening to us, watching us tonight, just starting to pull their hair out the teams that are trying to angle for <laughs> top position in the draft they want to see him beat in the league as fast as possible I mean he does have just tremendous tools potential and good production yield was fouled off the dribble and, and as good of a prospect as Andrew Wiggins is and he's a he's a tremendous prospect Embiid is probably the better long-term pro prospect because of his size, his athleticism. He, he can really be a game-changing defensive presence and rebounding presence. And he's got the ability to score. And he's still learning the game. He has no idea, and I don't say this cavalierly, he's, he, he doesn't have any real idea what he's doing out there yet. Well, he's very similar to Elijah Wan in that he played soccer, played some volleyball too as a kid, did not even pick up a basketball until he was 16 years old. 
And he's, he's like a sponge. I mean, he keeps learning. He wants to be good. He's been studying the history of the game. And one of the things, Dave, that he's been studying is the great big guys, how long did they stay in school? And a lot of the, what he's found out is, is a lot of the great big guys stayed in school for three or four years. Now, does that mean he's going to do Who knows what he's going to do? I don't know. But he's thinking about it. Well, it would be a boon to Kansas, I think, because his basket, best basketball is clearly ahead of him. And the longer he stays, the better production the Jayhawks are going to get from him. Well, he'll learn how to take his time in the post and refine his post game and his post moves. And they're pretty darn good now, but they're going to get better and better. And he's got he's going to get stronger. Right now, he lacks strength, but the, he's going to continue to get stronger. And when he does, look out. Well, I had Kansas against New Mexico a few weeks ago, and he had a dream shake move. I saw that. I mean, he had a. It looked like Elijah Wan. It was really eye-opening and he wasn't playing against little boys in that game and cam Bearstow and alex kirk those guys are big and strong two big strong upperclassmen and b kind of got knocked off balance there and that leads to the turnover and that's where we're talking about strength having that low base where you know he's being guarded by cameron clark and clark's you know six seven he shouldn't be able to guard mb in there clark trying to make his move mb played good defense and clark hit the shot anyway wow that's a heck of a play by Cam Clark. He's got 21. He's been one of the best players on the floor in this game. He's been one of the best players in the league all year long. Wayne Selden having his best game at Kansas. Ellis, beautiful little hook shot. Well, you let Perry Ellis get position that deep, and he's going to score or get fouled. And you can't let a guy catch it with a foot or two feet in the paint. That's what you call getting buried plays over by the time he catches it basically yeah I mean you know what you really want to do as a post guy is post deep enough where you don't have to use a post move look at that move from Clark with the foul my goodness is he playing well, well he's got a mismatch out on the perimeter you know, he sets a screen being guarded by Joel Embiid and goes right around him boy that little up fake that's a heck of a move made by Cameron Clark. He's just been dominating this game from that perspective. Uh, MB back to the bench. Well, you made the point that Clark plays so many minutes essentially as the four for Oklahoma. With this lineup, he's almost the five. Yeah, exactly. And what you really have to do is make him pay for it on the other end. Make him guard in the post, go after him. Because he's a matchup problem on the offensive end. I think when he's guarding, you have to make him feel a matchup problem on the defensive end. Sooner's not going away. Tharp down the lane, back to Selden, wide open. No good. Fight for the rebound. It's Heald who comes away with it. Sooners want to run. Now the Jayhawks did manage to get organized and back on defense. Now that wasn't a bad shot by Selden. But you want to think that Kansas should go inside there. They're on the road. So you need a score in that position. Clark is really feeling it. Cameron Clark! Just oozing confidence right now. This last stretch. And Oklahoma has shown in this game and every other that they can score. The issue is, can Oklahoma get stops? Trailer faces up, attacks through the lane, and scores. That's just good offense by Kansas. You know, getting the shot that you want. And I think on some of the possessions, the last few, Kansas has settled for a jump shot. Instead of getting the ball to the rim, put Oklahoma in a position to foul. That was really well done. Clark with the screen. No good on the three. Kansas just had some success in moving the ball from side to side and then getting it inside. Let's see if they will take yes for an answer and do it again. The lob and the ball hit the rim. So the pass from Selden was a little off the mark. Here's Clark right down the lane, blocked by Trailer, but it's a foul. Jamari Trailer not happy. All right, interesting stuff, Adnan. Thanks. 78, 72, 625 to go. Jay, that last play, I think it's worth looking at again. Yeah, a foul was called here, and you give Cameron Clark a lot of credit because he went hard to the basket, but 
Jamari Trailer here goes straight up. And I think that's the next step in college basketball is I think we have to do a better job of officiating verticality. The, the contact was created there by Cam Clark. I like the idea of protecting a shooter, but I don't think that Jamari Trailer did anything wrong there. He went straight up, and Cam Clark was what I call body-seeking. And I don't think that was a foul. But th those are bang-bang plays. They're tough to, tough to officiate. But I think our next step I think in, a, in doing the best job of officiating is to officiate verticality better. Free throw good. ESPN's journey to the tourney is sees a long spotlight on games that will impact the tournament. Saturday, North Carolina Syracuse, part of Saturday's showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. Good matchup in the ACC. Clark, who has lived at the free throw line, the Sooners have just done a tremendous job all game getting to the line. Those numbers 26 of 30 at the line for Oklahoma. Isaiah Cousins guarding the ball out top. Down low, Embiid went right over the defense, but missed the shot. Loose ball, Ellis there, scramble, diving everywhere. Selden gets the timeout. Good hustle play by Wayne Selden. Boy, what an energizing play by Kansas. Everybody hitting the deck, but how about Wayne Selden, who's had a tremendous offensive game, comes in from essentially out of the picture and dives to get possession. First, Perry Ellis, first to the floor. And when that ball gets away from that was a terrific play by Wayne Selden to get that ball. Reminds me of Aaron Kraft. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> from last night against Michigan That's State. That's exactly right. I mean, where Kraft sort of came out of nowhere. All of a sudden, he was flying across the screen. There's Wayne Selden right there. And comes all the way across. And as soon as that ball gets away, I mean, he gets there before Buddy healed and just dives right in front of him, able to call a timeout. And every coach, Norm Roberts, Curtis Towns and Bill Self, they were all up, shaking their fists. That's the kind of play that wins you a game on the road. It is worth pointing out for the Jayhawks, only one timeout remaining now after using that one to preserve the possession. They'll get a new shot clock. 6.04 to go. Four-point lead for Kansas on the road. They've won 22 consecutive conference openers, trying to make it 23 years in a row. Tharp. They almost dared him to shoot and he made him pay. He gave a little look over to Connor Frankamp on the right. He kind of sort of froze the defense and nobody even got a hand up. And Tharp was just able to step into that shot with great rhythm. Here's Buddy Heald. The spin move almost lost his balance. Woodard into the lane with the shot blocker. The presence there almost caused a turnover. Cousins got Embiid in the air. And then it's Clark drawing a foul. Now that foul was on Connor Frankamp. He can't foul there. Uh, he's got Joel Embiid behind him to block that shot or at least change it. You got to give your big guy a chance to erase that. You know, that that's not a good play by Frankamp, who's a, a good and smart player. His fourth foul, ninth team foul. Cameron Clark's never had a game where he's taken and made as many free throws as this. See Fran Camp fouls right there instead of letting Embiid come over and make that play. And Cameron Clark must much less likely to make a shot over Embiid than he is to knock down a couple free throws. Yeah, he didn't have much room to maneuver there. Embiid was waiting for him. He missed a rare one from the line. So the Jayhawks, who remember, preserved that possession with a great hustle play and hit a three. So essentially that hustle play by Selden got him three points with the 81-75 lead. Tharp, now that's a tough shot. Hits it anyway. Wow, gutsy. That's one where if it doesn't go in, it doesn't look like a great shot. But it went right on through. The Deer Tharp has played well through foul trouble. Cousins baseline. Healed. Clark had it ripped away by Ellis. And now Ellis is fouled in the open court by the freshman Woodard. Now the crowd not happy with it, but I thought Ellis got all ball going after that rebound. Yeah, I thought so too. I mean, it looked like he took Cam Clark down to the floor, but now here's Nadir Tharp just shooting it right over Ryan Spangler. That was a terrific shot. Bar 
Hart matched up with Heald away from the basket. Here comes Ellis to set a screen. And that high ball screen, pick and pop. Now it's Embiid's turn. Shot clock under 10. Embiid not really a pick and pop player. I think that's much better with Perry Ellis setting that screen up top where Embiid can duck in low. Woodard had it altered from behind, didn't go. Spangler, tough guy, rebound, wow. reverse is good. What a great play by Ryan Spangler. One to get a tough offensive rebound. He's a heck of an offensive rebounder, averages about three a game, but using the rim and using his left hand to avoid the block shot, that was big time. Yeah, big time play for a guy who's had a very quiet game, relatively speaking. He's been a very good player for Oklahoma. So now we're under four minutes to go. Hawks have been able to keep some separation between themselves and Oklahoma. Double team. Ellis hits a cutting Wayne Selden, who is fouled. So the pass out of the double team, and Wayne Selden will go to the free throw line. When we come back, home stretch coming up, final 318 with Kansas in the lead. The best part about going to Walt Disney World just might be staying at a Walt Disney World. Point lead right now for St. Joe's, 45 to go. We'll keep it close. And also coming up, Garius Adams and the Miami Hurricanes facing UNC just over 11 minutes from now as a suit half to the Tar Heels and the Kings. Dave, back to you. All right, thanks, Adnan. Final 318 here from the Big 12, Kansas. Now building its lead, Wayne Selden at the free throw line, building on his huge night. What a game for the freshman from Massachusetts. He made a really nice cut against that double team when the ball went inside to the post. He cut and made himself available, and Kansas is going to need when they get the ball inside. Oklahoma continuing to double. They just have to make good decisions against that double. Time is not the ally of Oklahoma now, so wasted possessions are going to be costly. Clark just inside the three-point line. Huge game for Cameron Clark. Jordan Woodard doing a really nice job of finding him. And Cam Clark is about as hot as you can get. 31 points, tremendous show in the second half. Clark was fouled. That's a block against Oklahoma. Once Nadir Tharp got his head and shoulders around the defender, and he was defender, and he was taking it all the way. Clark just slides in there. He wasn't even close to being in position. No. And that's big whistle. That's the fourth foul on Cameron Clark. They cannot afford to lose him. This is the first Kansas leaving some points at the line Thursday night showcase presented by Reese's peanut butter cups doubleheader tomorrow night on ESPN Memphis Louisville then a really good matchup at the Pac-12 top ranked team in the country Arizona UCLA and nine Eastern on ESPN Memphis looking to bounce back. They just got beaten up by a very good Cincinnati team. And I've seen Cincinnati play a lot this year and now the improvement of Justin Jackson has been a big difference. That team's had a hard time scoring, but he's really become an interior threat to add on to Sean Kilpatrick on the perimeter. Yeah, surprise, surprise, Cincinnati's got another tough guy team. Oof. I mean, they really guarded Pittsburgh up in the garden. We haven't had quite as much defense here tonight. Buddy Heal goes right by the defense. Ellis tried to block the shot, but it's another foul against the Jayhawks. And that's what Heald is doing a better job of this year. He can really shoot it, but he's also versatile, and he can drive it as well. Yeah, we've seen good athleticism. That tip play where he fl flew in from the perimeter and tipped in a miss. We, for a guard, he's a good offensive rebounder. He's got a good floater, and he's really dangerous in transition where they hit him with a little pin-down screen. He can come off of it, and he always comes off ready to shoot. Sooners have done so much work at the free-throw line. Kansas has as well, but... Oklahoma with a miss. Heald made the second. Back down to a five-point lead. 
Uh, Wiggins playing with four fouls. He has not been particularly aggressive on the offensive end, but I think Kansas got to look to keep getting the ball inside and not settle for jumpers. Well, there's Wiggins right to the basket, but didn't finish. Woodard, I think, was already thinking about outlet. It's another hustle play for Selden. No timeout, and the arrow favors Oklahoma. Now, Wiggins made a terrific move to the basket, but wound up double clutching. And he's got to go harder than that to the basket. That's the second time he's done that. Instead of going up and make somebody foul you. you know, get it up right to the rim. Go straight up. You, know, you hear some guys say, hey, take it up and dunk it. Well, it's easy to say that. But still, take it up to the basket and force a confrontation there rather than double clutching and bringing the ball down and making it a circus shot. And now Oklahoma could cut it down to three or two. Clark working against Wiggins with that foul trouble, and he went right by Wiggins. It was Embiid with the help, and the big man committed the foul. Well, that was just a smart play by Cam Clark. Knowing that Wiggins has four, he's going to drive him, and Wiggins basically had to pull up here and get out of the way. But when Embiid came over, you just can't bring your arms down. Once you bring your arms down, they're going to call that every time. Trying to set a new career high, Cameron Clark. He's matched his career best scoring game. And you mentioned that came against the then number one ranked team of the country earlier this year, Michigan State. Yeah, that game was up in Brooklyn. Oh. Missed that one though, so it's still a two possession game, 85-81. The foul was the fourth against MB. We've got foul trouble on both sides. Oklahoma trying to trap, and I think that was a kickball. The whistle came a half second late, but it yeah. was a kickball. Dave Hall right on top of that. And Kansas is starting to get some pressure. A little run and jump trap. You just have to be strong with it. And I think Kansas really has to attack the basket here. Any jump shot, I think, has to be out of getting the ball inside or getting a drive into the paint. Selden tried to do it, but the pass was knocked away. Cousins in the open court. Isaiah Cousins had it stolen by Wiggins, who dribbles it out of bounds. Boy, two bad plays. First Cousins, and then Wiggins making the steal. Just hold the ball. You know, not a very smart play by Wayne Selden, leaving the floor to pass. And I thought Cousins was going to take that ball to the rim, but after he threw it away, wh where's Wiggins going? Hold the ball. You got a minute and a half to go. Burn some clock in a two-possession game. Yeah, that could be a very costly mistake. He gives Oklahoma the ball back. Down by four. Here's Heald. Step back, challenged, and way short. See, that was a settle, too. Kansas wants to take some time off. Heald pressuring against Tharp, and he fouled him. And Adir Thar couldn't wait to get that ball back. It just didn't seem like it was in trustworthy hands up until he got it. Yeah, and you do like that from your point guard, right? Want oh, yeah. the ball in yeah. the last minute. But you don't want him to want it because you don't want it with anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. A little scary for the Jayhawks. He's you got not a great free throw shooter. Well, this is what the, the best teams do, though. They step to the line on the road, and they salt games away. Not yet double bonus. This is the front end. Rattles it home. It will be double bonus from here on out on both sides. Typically, maybe a little tougher backdrop. The students aren't here. It's still winter break. But two big pressure free throws for the junior Nadir Tharp. It's still a two possession game and there's plenty of time to extend this one so it, it, it's not like Oklahoma has to come down and pull the trigger on a three. I think Lon Kruger would like to take a time out here and talk about the strategy for the last minute six and that's exactly what Woodard's going to do get across the midcourt line and call timeout. Sooners have two timeouts remaining Kansas just one timeout left. You know, right here, you want to get some action to move the ball from side to side. They run some dribble handoff stuff. Maybe get a, a switch and get the matchup you want. You don't have to attack right away, but you want to get into something quickly. And then if you can get a drive 
and it draws the defense and you can kick it to an open shooter take it otherwise get to the rim and if you if you decide to take the two if that's what the defense gives you then do you have to foul quickly can you afford to fall back and play defense for one final possession if you can get a bucket in the first 10 seconds or so I think you go for a steal and a trap and if you don't get it then then I think you foul okay I mean I don't think you have to once you get a score and it's a four point game, whether it's four or three point game whatever the score you get uh, I st there's still plenty of time to extend this thing and you know you start jacking threes and all of a sudden this game gets over quick if you don't make them and they've only made one three in the second half Oklahoma's gone cold from the outside well Sooners got to go here Spangler on the perimeter hands it off healed in and out on the three and Kansas gets the rebound and now the Sooners at some point are going to have to foul so it almost fumbled the ball away Wiggins they didn't call a foul healed in the open court ducks it home uh, Wiggins didn't give him a chance to foul he just threw that ball up for grabs instead yeah. of being strong with it yeah that was just a great play by Oklahoma and a weak play by Andrew Wiggins uh, Wiggins caught the ball right in front of his own bench just hold it and let him foul you there's no rush to get rid of it and all of a sudden you got a six-point game two possessions with a chance to stretch it out to an eight-point game and the complexion of this has changed completely because of that play well it might not have been over but it was close to over if Wiggins just holds onto the ball and goes to the free throw line now Oklahoma's got a real chance in this one and now they've got an opportunity to set their defense get a, a quick trap maybe a quick steal off the inbounds and I think you give you give your team an opportunity to trap and see if Kansas will make the wrong decision because they've made some poor decisions down the stretch here yeah I think that's a good point whether it's play four seconds six seconds whatever it is try to force a turnover before you commit the immediate foul yeah there's no reason to to go crazy here you've got plenty of time if you manage the clock right Kansas trying to get some better free throw shooters out there so Connor Frankamp is on the court Wiggins is the inbounder here and that's a whistle before they even get the ball in bounds Kansas will go down to the other end and shoot free throws double bonus time for the Jayhawks Tharp once again to the line I think he's played well he has played well he's averaging about five assists a game he's got a two and a half to one assist turnover ratio but he's got to be steady for Kansas to win uh, maybe that's the key word yeah run the team and the numbers overall look pretty good for Nadir Thar but I think it's that up and down nature that has caused some angst in Lawrence and he's got to find a way to get his teammates more shots and that, I think that's a, a way that he can really help a guy like Andrew Wiggins is get him some easier baskets he's made big free throws in this game those were two huge ones six point lead for Kansas 39.9 seconds Fran camp out Jamari trailer back in and right now Kansas can switch every exchange I just want to make sure that they don't don't foul you certainly don't want to foul a three-point shooter Clark for three in and out long rebound Ellis Ellis holding on to the ball that's sort of the way you're supposed to do it that's exactly right I mean there's no reason to throw that ball up for grabs because they've got to come foul you so Ellis will be shooting free throws while we get just a brief moment let's check in once again with Adnan Burke in the studio all right, Dave, as that game is almost over, a reminder, coming up shortly, it'll be Miami and North Carolina. Currently on ESPN News, shortly on ESPN2, Bob Wischusen and Bruce Pearl will have the game for you in just a second, or you can watch on ESPN News. For now, Dave, back to you for the conclusion of the Jayhawks and Sooners. All right, thanks, Jayhawks, trying to get a win here in Big 12 play. ACC has been a little tough to figure out in the early part of their conference season. Yeah, I think the ACC, frankly, has been a little bit disappointing overall. I mean, it's a good conference. It's very good at the top. I think Syracuse has proven out thus far to be the best team. We'll see what happens down the stretch, but I have been incredibly impressed with Tyler Ennis, the point guard. Another Canadian like Andrew Wiggins, point guard from, from Syracuse. Talk about steady. I mean, nothing rattles that kid. Well, he deserves every time to be in that conversation of very best freshman of the country. 
Uh, we've had our freshman focus with kind of the big four, Wiggins, Randall, Parker, Gordon. I think Ennis has put it into a, a position of being the freshman five. Good block. Yeah, very good block by Wiggins. So Kansas looks like they're going to get out of Norman with a victory on the road to start conference play. Scramble for the ball. Well, that was a little sloppy. Arrow does favor the Jayhawks. I don't know why Oklahoma didn't foul. Yeah. And what were they waiting for? You foul right away. When Trailer had the ball, foul him. Even though Trailer's a, a really good free throw shooter, he's shooting about 81%. You got to foul him. Just 14.2 seconds left. They take Trailer off the court now. Tharp going to play keep away. Frank Camp over to Selden. Well, Kansas, they weren't perfect tonight. The offense sure was a lot better than the Jayhawks for the 23rd straight year win their conference opener. And a good bounce back off the loss to San Diego State. And with this brutal schedule Kansas has coming up, getting off to a 1-0 start in the league is exactly what they needed. It